day and welcome to the Philippines and back to the second channel. Twice the fun, half the effort. Actually, today it might even be one third of the effort. That is the least amount of effort so far. But it's gonna be 10 times the cash because today I'm gonna attempt to spend $100 on street food here in Manila. Right now we are in Quiapo Market. These alleyways, they are packed with people doing business, with rallies, with people eating street food. So I'm excited, it feels good to be back in the Philippines. Let's get it. I'm with Margie and this is our first food. Margie, can I take a look? This is Miswa soup. Chinese soup. A Chinese soup. You look inside, it looks like white vermicelli noodle. This looks fantastic. I'm hoping this is gonna cost nine, ten dollars, eleven dollars, because then I only need to eat ten foods to get to hundred. She starts by putting in a meatball and she puts in an egg, and then it's time for the soup. The soup smells very savory and delicious, like some ramen noodle seasoning in there. She puts in the rice noodle, drapes that on top. So here, I'm gonna put some fried garlic on here, and then chili oil. Oh, this looks deadly. And a little bit of pepper. How much is this? Oh, this is gonna be really hard. So, come take a look one more time. I'm mixing in some of that chili oil. You can see the fried garlic is becoming less crunchy, so I gotta eat it soon. Wanna go for it? Mm. Oh, that's very spicy. The noodles, they're so thin, it almost tastes like an egg drop soup. The reason it's so thick is because of some egg, some cassava flour. Next, I'm gonna grab this meatball. That looks steamy and hot. I gotta be very careful as I take this down. medium and squishy. What kind of meatball is it? Pork? Yeah, pork. Pork and some other stuff. I like it though, quite dense. Take a look at that, the inner mantle. It's like when you're in eighth grade science class and you see the planets all cut in half. All right, I'm gonna try out another bite. It's very addictive. It's not just savory, it's sweet too. Overall, a very nice combination. Let's keep going. Hello ma'am, could I please have the sotang hon soup? This is my first time trying some of these noodles and different types of dishes here. She starts with a glass noodle, a little bit of cabbage, and a whole egg in there. And then, if that wasn't good enough, then she puts on the broth. And that broth is orange and beautiful. Thank you so much. We'll be back to pay in a couple of days. <laughs> hey look, if you stand up straight, you can have a free haircut. Here we have a dish that's a bit more Chinese inspired than some of the things I've tried so far in the Philippines. 99% of the things I eat in the Philippines are usually pork or a pork broth, but this is beef. There's a smattering of vegetables inside and that's a fresh egg. The glass noodles, even alone, looked incredible. I'm gonna scoop up some of those noodles here. Well, it's very delicious. It's quite orange, but it doesn't taste orange. And then you ask yourself, well, what does orange really taste like anyways? I don't know. The glass noodles, they're so slippery, so easy to slurp it up. The cabbage, the vegetables are refreshing. The broth is interesting. It's peppery, it's salty, it's savory. It's definitely MSGE. And I think that's what's making me feel so like warm in my heart right now. This is a delectable quick snack. Is it gonna help me get to $100? No. I need to start looking for big ticket items, rare gems, uh, uh, endangered species, whatever I can find. I gotta keep going. We've come to a new neighborhood now. We are in Divisoria. And I found a food I've never seen before in the Philippines or elsewhere. It's uh, two different types of mashed potatoes. And the purple one, I'm told the color is natural. One order of this. So it's some of the purple potato and some of the white potato. She's gonna top that with margarine, actually. And then condensed milk. So a little bit of fat, a little bit of sugar on top of the potato. I'm trying to get the potato, the margarine, and the sugary condensed milk. Here we go. One big bite, 35 people watching me. Super normal. That's quite good. The potato, it's already sweet. It's like a, a sweet, sweet potato. The texture of the sweet potato, it's not like a typical mashed potato. It's got some chew to it. I'm very into this. I didn't know potatoes could be a dessert like this. This is incredible. It's very nice. This, 20 pesos, less than half a dollar. It's not helping me get to my goal, but it is delicious and a brand new discovery for me here in Manila. Let's keep moving. Oh, okay, so we have come to a different street. We stumbled upon this. I actually smelled this before I saw it. It is quite a pungent, fishy, seafoody odor coming from here. This is dried squid. And then she has the world's smallest grill here. So when you order it, she'll grill it or kind of roast it, put it in a cup and you can add some vinegar. I'm gonna order some right now. Can I have uh, this one and this one? Oh, that one has legs. So she puts it over the hot charcoal. She heats it up. It's also gonna soften it up a little bit, putting it over the hot charcoal here. It is almost ready. She puts it to the side for just a moment. She grabs a plastic cup. She inserts it into the plastic cup. And then right here, this is the main flavor. Oh, a load of onion and vinegar. The meal is finished. Come take a look. I'm gonna try to get as many of those onions on there as possible. Now this bite has all those little legs. It's gonna be awesome. Try it out. 
sauce is by far my favorite part. So it's a little sour, super oniony, and actually quite spicy too. So my mouth feels alive right now in this moment. It's bringing me back to life. I'm sweating. Those are pretty good. Super, super strong seafoody taste. Try another bite. We have the head of the squid. So they're very thin. It's like chewy and crunchy both. Overall, I like it, but what's saving it is definitely the power from this sauce. If it was an option, I would buy this from her because I would love to put this on just about everything. But if you're in the store, just look for Nature's Spring. That's the brand of this vinegar, or, or maybe not. We've come to our next food right here, corn. But it's not just any type of corn, it's cheese corn. My man here is gonna whip one up, sir. One cheese corn, please. So here's how it works. Come close and take a look. First, he puts some corn, and then he puts some processed chemical cheese powder, and then margarine. And that's not it, it's like a fruit and yogurt parfait. It's another layer of corn, another layer of chemical cheese powder. Oh, and then corn juice on that. And that might even help that cheese powder to dissolve a little bit. Thank you. My cheesy corn is right here. It's in the cup, it's steaming. It looks like a hot cup of coffee on a winter's day. So far, all of the cheese has kind of dissolved and then melted into one consistency, almost like a cheese soup. I know some of you think I might be being sarcastic when I call it chemical cheese, but here's the thing. Kraft macaroni and cheese was like my favorite food growing up, and what is that? That's cheese powder. So, no, am I hating on chemical cheese powder? Absolutely not. That's pretty good, and I like the size. It's like the size of a thimble. You're not going to get too full from it. It's surprisingly sweet. And so much easy. Gosh, I want to drink it like an old Chinese man drinks tea. This would be awesome in the cold winters of Manila. You know in Manila when it gets down to freezing and there's snow in the air. You can hear Christmas carols. That's when it would be really perfect. All right, cheese corn. Big win. Let's keep moving. We've got our next food right here. So here he has a variety of fried treats. There's two in particular. One, this is isao, the chicken intestine that's been breaded and fried. And then this is calamari that's also been breaded and fried. I'm gonna put it in a cup and I'm gonna find some flavoring to put on top of it. All right, boom, that is plump full of calamari. My man, how much is this? 20 pesos. I don't know. He just looks at it. He eyes it up and he knows in his heart how much it should cost. Here's the thing. Tell me in the comments if I'm right, Filipinos, especially in Manila. When you find these fried food places on the street, is it really about the fried food or is it about finding the best sauce possible? Because to me, I want a sauce with onion and chilies that's like really fresh looking. It doesn't look like, you know, 20 other people dipped into it. That's the kind of sauce I'm looking for. All right. So he's got the vinegar right here. He's going to pour it in and really douse the whole thing with vinegar, chilies, and onions in there. Oh, some cucumber too. Lucky. Try it out. I got some here. A little bit of onion still on there, dripping with delicious vinegar. Oh. Super breaded. A little squiddy flavor. The sauce is just kind of okay. Mm. That was a fresh one, so it was nice and crispy. Overall, I'm a fan of the calamari, but the sauce here, not my favorite. Let's try this. That looks like it could also be calamari, but no, that is intestines of the chicken. The chicken intestine in Quezon City. That's the first food I ever did for this channel. And now, something like six, seven years later, I'm back. I'm trying it again. Let's go for it. Woo, I've had better. A little gamey, a little questionable. There's nothing wrong with chicken intestines in general. It prepared properly and cleaned properly. This chicken intestine tastes awful. I'm not sure what's up with it. Uh, I'm not going to take another bite. That's going to be an end for me on this cart. I want you to know I wasn't just talking crap about the sauces. I love this kind of vinegar so much with all the onions in there. Ma'am, hello, how are you? Can I buy this? How much? Two. Two. 200. So I can buy this for 200. I am literally flying to Vietnam tomorrow and I'm gonna take this with me in my suitcase and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna land and just find vinegar inside all my clothes. We have come to our next location. He is frying some internal organs of the cow, including from the mammary glands of the cow. He's cut these down, he's giving me a toothpick and he's gonna spray it with some sauce. Oh, that is full of chilies and vinegar. Sir, what is your name? Mark, sir. Mark? Yes. Is this your recipe? Yes, sir. And how long have you been here? I think he has like a loyal fan base, people who keep coming back to try this over and over again. We've just been here for a short time and he can hardly keep up with everybody ordering. Mark? Salama. Thank you. Mark just made his great escape. It turns out his restaurant is also a bicycle. So right after I ordered this, he just biked away. So now I don't have to taste it in front of him and worry about his judgment. I'm gonna give it a smell. The vinegar is doing its best, but it is hard to cover up how pungent and gamey this meat is. Let's go for it. Mmm. Wow, that is a taste, and it might take some time to get used to. The meat tastes a little bit rancid, like a little bit intense. Sometimes people like a very pungent, gamey beef. For me, one bite was plenty. 
Welcome to our next food right here. This stall has a little bit of everything. They have some guek guek, which is a quail egg wrapped in dough and fried. They've got fish balls. And then they have this. This is called kikim. That is a mixture of pork, seafood, and really a bunch of fillers, and then made into this unique shape. After they fry it, you have two different options. You've got a sweet, sticky sauce, and then a sweet, sticky sauce that's also spicy. I'm gonna put this one in here. You are just welcome to douse it as much as you want to. That is our finished product. How much is this? 20 pesos, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get to $100 in my, I'm gonna take this outside and try it out in the sunlight. They gave you about 10 in here, not bad. You can see it is slathered with that sauce and you know it's a good one because there are chili chunks in there. It smells satisfying, it is savory, fishy. It's kind of like odeng that I've tried in Korea. I like it. Very fish ball -y in texture. Like a delicious wet styrofoam with all this sweet sticky sauce on it. That is also spicy. Aside from the sauce, there's not an incredible amount of flavor. Overall, satisfying. I do like the very sticky sauce. Without the sauce, this would be nothing. Boom, that is the end of the video. I tried my best. I had uh, quite a lot of food. In the end, maybe I spent almost $5. It is pretty much, I'm gonna say, impossible to spend $100 on street food unless you're buying street food for 500 people. One of the challenges here in the Philippines, in a place like this, when you're selling street food, they have to find a product that they can sell at a very low price point where they can still make a profit. And so you're seeing all these foods that are like less than half a dollar. I learned a lot. I tried a lot of new foods. A couple I didn't like, but mostly I thought it was pretty yummy overall. To me, that's a pretty good day. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching it's raining now enjoy the show it's the second channel uh we don't try that hard we gotta go yes like this i'm gonna go with him let's go let's go a piece